Every individual deserves the opportunity to develop their talents, and as we move further into the 21st century, their certain skills, such as being able to understand what to do with massive amounts of information that we now have available, what to do with modern technologies, how to pretty much find the skills you need to perform tasks, are increasingly valuable skills in the job market. It's not so much about how much content we can get into individuals' heads, but how they know how to navigate a more interconnected world where information is readily available, but there might be even too much of it at some points, and we need to be able to navigate within these greater amounts of information that are at our fingertips and that are accessible not just through a computer, but increasingly to just our cell phones that we carry in our pocket every day. Uh, so the Community Technology Center is an initiative in the Dominican Republic to bridge the digital divide. And the way they do this is by creating centers located in mostly rural regions in the country, impoverished regions. And um, that way they can provide access to the people that they didn't have access before. Uh, it's an initiative that started with the First Lady of the Dominican Republic, the current Vice President. And her goal is that, is to provide access to people, primarily girls, boys, and people just in impoverished communities. Uh, so these centers are located in very remote regions. I had the privilege of visiting some of them last summer. And I decided that, you know, they could, they have a lot of things going well for them. But uh, working with them and listening to the problems and uh, some of their concerns, um, they could be more connected. And they are, uh, they, they're very interested in doing that. And one great way to do that is through adventure learning. Why? Because um, at the same time, there is also an, a need for better understanding of the heritage, culture, and history of the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic doesn't have the best educational system in the world. Um, the, the educational system uh, is improving, but it has a lot of uh, potential. But it, it also um, leaves you with you know a, a, an understanding that more could be done to to improve the educational system, and the CTCs can help bridge that divide. Not just uh, digital divide in the sense of access and digital literacy, but also information literacy and improving uh, the outlook for individuals um, throughout the country. So they offer courses such as English courses and, and, and basic computer courses, uh, but history is something that is forgotten sometimes. And the beauty of this program is if you if you look at that map where CDCs are located, again, there are over 80 of them, they're located in throughout the country, and that allows us to really think of, well, what can we share? What can we learn? What are the challenges that are facing different communities? How can by this program or the CTCs being throughout the country really facilitate a great or very unique adventure learning experience. In, in that sense, it's kind of like adventure, uh, the Explorer 15, and there's the potential for people in different parts of the country to share their own stories. And that's kind of what my project is emphasizing or promoting. Um, we're gonna do that through the use of mobile devices. So I went ahead and I purchased a few mobile devices and the goal was to purchase, I mean, what's surprising really, it's how mobile devices have gone down in cost. So one of the things, let me see. But um, you're able to purchase really good devices for very low cost. So if you go to my purchase history, you'll see what I mean. Um, Android Incredible, this was comparable to the iPhone 3. I mean, it's $40 now. Um, this one, it's, you know, maybe like an iPhone 4 comparison, and it's $150, and that's unlocked, so they can use that anywhere in the world. Um, I'll probably go at IBM, I'm actually going to probably distribute these flip side phones uh, for $50 a piece, and again, they're kind of like an iPhone 3 comparison. Uh, and the nice thing about them is they have SD cards where you can load them up with content, so they'll be having uh, some content added to them as well. Uh, probably teacher training materials in, in particular and other types of resources as well. I've been working with the racial initiatives and we World Possible and also working a little bit with um, Books for Africa here in the Twin Cities to, to send resources to to initiatives like this uh, in, a, in a packet that people can use. But again, that's not um, that's just a supplement. However, the mobile devices are key for individuals really recording their own uh, learning experiences. Where are the groups here? At first, I was going to create a group just for for everybody, but then I decided that you know there are two different groups, as I discussed in the planning of it. Uh, one group is faculty, so faculty have a Facebook page um, that will be Technologia and Pedagogia. So in this page, you know you can post up here the 
like the environment, what are we going to be discussing, if they got any questions they can contact me and this will be further detailed with um, dates of topics that we'll be discussing but the goal is to match the course materials, the topics, the packets with events that actually happen and are geographically bound uh, or important for a particular region in the country and then they can share them across CTCs Again, the CTCs have a lot of uh, communication with each other via Facebook you know, these are all my Facebook CTC friends, for example, so they all have a Facebook page they keep up to date. But this would be an environment that they can all be invited to and share. So I can either invite the CTCs themselves and they can come up here, or I can, um, which might be the way to go, because those are kind of the instructor's pages anyhow. Uh, and then we can communicate through this and share resources and discuss, you know, like um, I added um, some various activities where they can go out to the community, interview people, um, report on, on their students, share best practices. So the, the faculty part of it is, is more of how to use technology more effectively, what's happening with learning in the 21st century. And a lot of, you know, these are not so adventure-like in, in a sense. There, there are some adventure components, such as what's important in the community, but primarily it is pedagogy-based. And it keeps going down. There are different activities. This is my template. I'll then make them. You can pin posts to the top. So here you can see pin posts and recent posts. So you can kind of raise up the most relevant posts. You can also create galleries of images. So if I go to about, it has kind of a description here. Currently, it's a secret group, and there's a, an email for the whole group. Um, some events I created for them as well. So they have like the official meeting. So we have a face to face meeting. We'll get together and go from that face to face meeting to then a little bit more detailed meeting. So right now, the tentative, tentative dates are July 1st for one of them, July 20th for the other one. Um, and just, you know, they'll they also be asked to share pictures, share resources. But since they'll be given mobile devices, kind of the goal is for them not just to use these readings. So here, readings about constructivism, readings about, you know, just different TPAC and other readings in Spanish that Freire and other readings that they might find useful. But the goal is not for them to just focus on, you know, oh, this is a great LMS, this is great, it's on Facebook, I can, you know, learn and, and have my well-detailed syllabus of what we're learning when, uh, but just also be able to upload. So part of being in a group, if I go to group management settings, I'll be able to, to really um, edit group settings to be able to, well, who can send members in? What is our group address? Uh, who can post? So can anybody post or can only I post? Um, can I, do I have to moderate post approval? So in this case, yeah. Uh, so I'm guessing I'll probably have post approval, but that anybody can post. Uh, as long as they're part of the group, but not anybody can be invited to the group. So it does have some exclusivity to it, um, which is um, something that I think is important. You know, we want it to be linked to the main social network they use. So there is a low threshold into participating, but not really anybody can join in a sense. You know, there is some, um, you have to be invited to be part of this experience. Um, so that's one of the courses, uh, but it really works together with this course. And this one is the one that has more of the adventure learning components to it. Uh, and, and the part of this course is, again, it has, you know, events, it has photos, it has files that quickly show them. So you have here some of the files, they discuss identity, community, um, so it kind of goes introspectively into who is a Dominican, why are you a Dominican, um, what is the history of the location where you live. So it asks students to, you know, interview and post what they discover from interviewing community members. So it has that uh, part where they are out to gather data and teach each other about their communities. So kind of the goal is, you know, every city C is located in a very interesting community and I don't think right now they're linking, they're really learning about the diversity of the country and it'd be great to link it to historical events, link it to um, just other information that it is relevant to them. I mean it's their heritage uh, after all, you know, it's they're from the, the country, they're from the Dominican Republic and they are developing a sense of identity as students and um, we are always changing but primarily we're more malleable in some of the developmental stages that we live at an earlier age, so uh, th they can benefit from this introspective discussion of who they are and who they want to be. So th these are some examples of pictures that you know I'm going to ask them to upload pictures, discuss what communities, discuss the importance of dancing, discuss what it is to be a Dominican. Again, this camera icon is kind of like, well, yeah, go out and take your own picture. And here are some examples I share, a post about identity, some pictures about what it is to be a Dominican as well. And it's great that the site really allows you to, you know, have have all these things, including events. Um, 
Let's see. So that's the event I have lined up for them so far. About creativity, the importance of creativity. So kind of keeping it fun and fresh is important. You know, there's some good documentaries, and it kind of keeps going down. Uh, you can ask them also to, you know, improve the Wikipedia entry for their own community. So in that sense, they're all. But again, the goal is you share with your community, you share what's historically meaningful in that community, and you share with a lot of your audience. And a lot of your audience are other CTC participants, which are located throughout the Dominican Republic. So the goal is to learn from each other, peer learning in a sense. Uh, and, and it's very similar in that sense to, to Adventure 15. Uh, we're all learning. We can all uh, experience. And we now all have also tools to record some of these uh, learning experiences. So, again, the cheap mobile devices by $50 or $100, however, whatever the threshold I decide, you know, it is taxing. It might not be affordable to everybody. But the community center, again, is filled with you know, beautiful installations and some more state of the art um, architecture and resources. So, you know, they, they can do a lot of the things that just the average person can do and that's what their goal is in the community anyhow is to prepare people for the 21st century so bringing people into this discussion uh, I could go in and on and some of the activities I I added already but I mean I'm gonna add more of them so activities from reading resources to videos to you know it's very multimedia and high quality resources uh, I am the curator for them and in this course but uh, I will open that to students as well Again, I'll be the moderator for it, same as with the faculty part of it, uh, but it is important to make it as participatory as possible. And, and again, Moodle also allows you to ask questions, which I do have some poll questions as well. So the page may be used, but really, instead of the pages, which I do have some pages I created here, I'm probably going to focus on the groups, just because you have the ability to set the privacy levels and invite individuals. So the page is more you like me or not like me. And if you like me, you get updates. Uh, and pages are kind of more open. Um, in terms of groups, is you're a private group, you are a secret group, we are an open group, and you have to request membership. And it, it does have kind of its own place, and it also allows for files. The nice thing of files is that it has two types of files. It has files that are, you know, create a document, which I created here, one document. And then the other ones are, uh, are PDFs. Let's see. So here's one of them. Um, so you can preview them and download them and annotate them, etc. So you know that's all within the site. It allows up for 25 megabytes of upload. It won't have bandwidth level problems. I won't really have to pay for a server. They won't have an extra hundred to sign in. They already are signed in because they they are already probably very familiar with Facebook. I know that because when I went to this computer labs like here, 80% um, of the computers were using Facebook. So if FERPA is not an inconvenience, if they're already using Facebook for learning, well, let's use Facebook for adventure learning in the Dominican Republic and just really modify what we have available. I mean, you can really bring reading support down. You can have great quizzes. You can have a lot of the automated features we have within a learning management system such as Moodle, but it is uh, more flexible than people would probably give it credit for. Uh, so that's um, some of the emphasis. Um, so let's see. So if we go here into, so is the problem defined? Yes, I mean, they have a problem. Identity is a problem. Community is a problem. They're all involving asking questions, learning from each other, uh, getting, you know, I'll be there. I'll collect data. I'll share videos about the communities. I'll interview some people. So I'll have some kind of tests or videos, examples for them. But they will create most of the content themselves. So they're teaching each other. So I, I will be the expert here in the diagram of the community um, because I'm maintaining the site that I'm also curating content but I am sharing some of the creation part to both students and teachers so when we think I mean in that sense it is more like adventure learning 2.0 the teachers and the students are creating a lot of the more of the content and the expert is not so much it is a content expert but it's more of a curator uh, than, than, than just a uh, creating most of the content and then sending it from the Arctic. You know, I'm, uh, I want to be able to harness the potential that they have by CTCs being located anywhere in the country. Um, in terms of identity, yeah, you know, it's, again, it's one of the topics we're going to be discussing. It has a geographical location, the population, and we are trying to just share history, share uh, knowledge, and emphasize the importance of a community. Um, the curriculum, uh, it will be, you know, we're developing it. Um, the syllabus, and the weight of every part and how invested they will be, you know, it is a, a question that I have in the sense of 
how much of this is informal learning, how much is a formal learning, uh, what the certificate they get at the end, you know, so in that sense, how do we pair up with the curriculum they have in the Dominican Republic, it is a challenge. And that's the part of that. It doesn't really depend so much on me, but on uh, my partners there, what they feel would be best for them. So that's something that we need to keep exploring. Uh, in terms of uh, exploring the geographical locale, um, again, I'm providing devices. So they'll go with a device and they'll explore. Um, I'm providing devices primarily to the faculty, to the teachers. Uh, but some students do have devices already, and kind of the goal is to promote more mobile learning. So I am going to make a pitch for uh, the community technology centers to have a few sets of devices that students can borrow and use. So that's kind of the goal. We'll see. You know, some of these communities have more security problems than others. So that is somewhat of a concern. Um, in terms of sharing, each why sharing through Facebook? Uh, when I talked to Carolina Motomota, she mentioned how sharing through Facebook allowed for some of the course materials to kind of be go viral in a sense or become memes and then be picked up by other people. So, I mean, is that a bad thing? Uh, not necessarily. You know, I think we're competing for attention. I, in, in many ways, it's a good thing. We're competing for attention of students. And when we make education cool and education accessible and more visible to just other people, around that have access to Facebook, then maybe some other people learn um, by being connected in that connectivist sense of learning that we're all kind of a bigger network and we all get out of it what we want well, but just being able to connect to a sense to the learning experience by keeping it, I mean, probably it won't be a secret group. It'll be probably a, either a private group or an open group, but open in the sense that I still got to manage admissions, but maybe people will have access to see what's going on. So we'll see. But it should be uh, PG-13, sort of right, or lower. So it shouldn't be an, an issue of who is looking at the materials. Uh, so they'll be collaborating with each other. And because collaboration involves that sense of we're all creating and we're all commenting. And, and that's a big part of it. Uh, so I think it, it does have, you know, there's a lot of media artifacts. Uh, it, it's really Web 2.0 or Web 3.0 maybe even. So, you know, we're really trying to engage people through mobile learning and creating media artifacts. And it is pedagogical integration because, um, yeah, it, it does have a lot of considerations of, well, how long are the videos? How much is their attention span? How uh, should we promote uh, good discussions? And, and they're synced in the sense that I will look, or I am looking already, at, you know, the calendar of, of main events in the Dominican Republic. I have it here, uh, festive days. So how do some of those dates and some of the things that the Museum of the Resistance, for example, doing other different museums that deal with some of the stuff we are doing, and how we match that with uh, the, the environment that I'm creating uh, via Facebook. Um, is the internet driven? Again, Facebook is internet, right? So you can't have Facebook, you can't have your social network without the internet. Uh, but increasingly, it's going mobile. So mobiles play a major role. Uh, collaboration, it's not going to happen if they don't buy into it, if they don't participate. I'll put some... Mm, some some incentives, right? Like I'm trying to get them to interact, but their interaction is, is key. They have to participate. So there'll be collaboration and, and interaction. And there is a curriculum, and it is a venture based um, because I want them to discover, explore, and get to know their communities better. Um, and all that I think together it has that issue, that place, and and it is a, a good looking forward to um, a good le venture learning experience that I'm looking forward to seeing how it all unfolds. Um, I think we have a lot of things going for the project, and I'll probably uh, have uh, an update to make uh, before long on how things are further developing. Uh, thanks, it's been a pleasure to be part of this course. Bye.